Hey guys, I wanted to take you with me for a walk today, but in true England fashion, it is a wet and windy day. So I thought I'd do something a little bit different to start this video off. I'm going to make a brew and I'd love for you to join me and have a chat about trading and parenting and trading psychology and what a crazy week it's been for me trading Forex. This video is inspired by one of my favourite podcasts, Parenting Hell, by two UK-based comedians, Rob Beckett and Joss Widdicombe. It's really funny and I feel like I have certainly had one of those parenting hell moments this week where I actually had a breakdown. And usually I try to keep it separate from trading, but in this case it does relate. Plus I've had a lot of questions from you guys asking how I managed to balance trading and being a full-time mother. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about that to start off in this video. Then later in the video, we're going to jump onto the charts and I'm going to show you some of the trades I took this week. As always, all the software that I'm using later in the video is linked below and please remember to like and subscribe. Let's get the kettle on. Tuesday was officially the closest that I've come to a breakdown yet. It consisted of a series of unfortunate events where at the time I felt frustrated, angry, upset, emotional. However, looking back upon reflection, they're actually quite funny. Disclaimer, if you're thinking of conceiving a child, you should probably look away now. <laughs> to begin with, Tuesday morning started off pretty sweet with our usual morning routine, carrying out my morning trade analysis, getting the boys out of bed, getting their breakfast. And then we did some housework. We decided that that was the day of the toy purge and I wanted to restore some zen to the house. But after lunch, everything went downhill, rapidly. Context, my oldest son Sam is two and a half years old and only last week he's decided to drop his afternoon naps where he was having two hours sleep in the afternoon. What does this mean? It means that I have got one very tired and very reactive two-year-old on my hands. On the other hand, Theo is my youngest boy and he's coming up to his first birthday already. Sam has been totally pushing the boundaries and it's what everybody refers to as the terrible twos. My husband likes to call it willful disobedience. Little things like pushing Theo over, taking away his toys, not listening. If you have children, you will probably recognise these signs. Usual toddler behaviour. Well, after lunch, whilst Theo was finishing his lunch, I was playing with Sam at the table. We were blowing some bubbles and I had him on my knee and I was holding the bubble part whilst he dipped the wand in and was blowing bubbles. And naturally, it was dripping a little bit on the floor. Next thing, he stood up, he slipped over, he sort of threw his arms up, he caught me with the bubble pot and I threw that up and the next minute the bubble pot tips up and it goes all over his head, down his clothes and all down me as well. So we're both just dripping wet in bubble fluid. So we had to go up, get him cleaned up and changed, get myself cleaned up and changed. I came back downstairs, pretty tired because it was getting to two o'clock and I was certainly ready for the first sit down of the day. So Sam was sorted. Then I got Theo cleaned up and out of his chair, put him down. I turned my back to get Sam a snack that he wanted. When I looked back, Theo had grabbed Sam's cold cup of tea that I didn't realise he'd left on the table and tipped it completely down him. So then I had Theo dripping wet head to foot and I had to take him upstairs and give him a full change. After that, we were so ready to get outside in the garden to try and chill and unwind a little bit, which was lovely. I was sat here looking outside. You can probably see the view behind me. This is one of my favorite spots just to be out in nature. But it wasn't long until Sam did something else, something that was really naughty. I don't even remember what it was right now, but it was enough for me to take him up to his room to give him five minutes of time out. So I left him in there and then after a few minutes, I started to think maybe something was up. I should check on him because it went quiet. So I went into his room and it stunk of shit. Now he's actually doing so well for a toddler. He is pretty much having his poo on the toilet most of the time so this was unusual for him and I was just like ah oh, another change a stinky change I wasn't in the mood but it's got to be done so I took him into the bathroom to get him changed to finish him off on the toilet first of all 
and then discovered he needed to show it. So whilst he was on the toilet finishing off, Theo, meanwhile, was in the landing and started to have a meltdown, decided he was tired all of a sudden. So I was trying to console Theo. Meanwhile, Sam came running over to us from the bathroom to see what was going on. Little did I know that he stood up. I have no idea how it happened, but he managed to get some poo on his leg and he got it on his foot. And the next minute, I've got pooey footprints running across the bathroom floor towards us. I was just like, ah, oh, this is not happening. So Theo had to go in his bed for a moment so I could get Sam in the shower and clean the floor. But Theo was still not happy, so I had to get him back out of his bed and give him a cuddle, give him some water. Sam was in the shower at this point, but he opened the door and was coming out of the shower to us. I mean, we were in the landing right next to the bathroom with the door open, so we were all together, but it wasn't enough. He wanted to come to us. And at this point, I was literally stuck between Theo here crying, Sam here coming out of the shower, and I was like, what do I do? I don't have enough hands here to do this. And I just kind of lost it a little bit and just cried out like, ah, just help me, just cut me some slack, give me a break, anything. <laughs> it might not sound much, but it's just so tiring at times. It gets so overwhelming. And why am I sharing this with you? Well, I guess I'm having a little bit of a rant, but also just to share the context of my lifestyle at the moment, balancing this with trading is pretty hectic. It's pretty intense. And needless to say, it's been a red week for me trading. Now there may be some of you who are thinking, well, why can't you just put them into nursery, put them into some sort of daycare so that I can focus on the trading. That would be a valid idea. But when we had children, me and my husband, we made the decision that I wanted to be a stay at home mum for the first few years. He has already been on the waiting list to join a local school for us, which we're excited about. Uh, but it's not for another year. He'll start when he's three, that's Sam. and. I could put them into nursery early, but it's just not really what we want to do because I want to make the most of this experience while they are this age. They're going to have their whole lives to go to school and to grow up. Plus, something I've not talked about before on the channel because I do like to keep my personal family life and trading more separate, but I feel like it's about time to probably share with you guys is we did have a little bit of a shock, a surprise when we had Theo, our second born, um, because he didn't show up on the scan, but he was in fact born with a physical disability. Now, I love him to pieces and he's absolutely perfect for me. And for my husband and for our family, he's wonderful. I could not imagine life without him at all. However, it certainly impacted a few decisions and for example, it has removed any desire that we would have had to put them into nursery preemptively because I just want to spend the time with them and I have those motherly protective urges. But what does this mean? Well, as I learned this week, it means that I've really got to learn to recognize the, the, the line, the divide between knowing when I am too emotional to trade. And this week, I have not recognized that at all. Alongside the trials and the challenges of everything that comes with looking after these two this week. I've also come on to my period. Um, guys, sorry I know you don't like to know stuff like that, but it's valid stuff that us women traders need to be aware of because obviously it's another emotional roller coaster and with trading, emotions have such an impact on your decision making and I've certainly noticed it this week. Look at the chart for pound dollar, for example. This week, pound dollar has been trending beautifully in an uptrend and using my usual trading plan I should have capitalized on that this week. It matched up perfectly with my usual entries breaking daily highs using Fibonacci retracement. However, I've come to the end of the week and I don't even realize why I have not followed my plan. It's just been such a difficult week. I have tended to try to predict reversals much too soon and I've just taken quite a few losers this week. And I know that I've traded poorly. I know that I've not followed my plan, but it's almost like you're not in control. Something's overriding you. It's hard to describe. All I can say is that I feel like there's such a difference when I'm on my period because I just don't have that discipline. And also the challenges I've had with the boys. So for me moving forward, I'm just recognizing these patterns so that I can try to predict my own behavior in the future so that I can recognize when I'm in this place to just not trade. Fortunately, it's not been a disaster week. I've not taken any huge losers, just a couple of losers, which put me red on the week. That's in both my live account with IC Markets and also the prop firm that I trade with the 5%ers.
Another huge lesson that I've had this week since I've realised is the importance of mindfulness and meditation. Something that I used to do a lot of and I used to share it on the channel, but literally two babies later and I don't even think to do it. Well this week has certainly shown me that mindfulness and meditation will not only help my training performance but also my ability to stay calm and patient as a mother. So me and my husband have both decided we're going to take up our whole routine of practicing mindfulness meditation together. Have you got any techniques that you use to help you to stay calm when you're trading, to help you to follow your plan? Let me know in the comments below. We will, let's go up to the office and jump onto the charts. Right guys, so here I am on my charts on trading view. I've got a few things I want to share with you today. The main theme of this session on the charts is the fact that it's so important to trust your trading plan. If you don't have a trading plan, I've got a link in the description below where you can download one for free to help get you started. But a trading plan is your roadmap to success, but you're not going to reach success if you don't trust that map, that plan. That's what I have faltered on this week. And just to show how simple trading can be, is this is a trade that I considered taking right at the open, right at the start of the week. What you're looking at here is the five minute time frame for pound dollar and I've used the back testing tool to go back in time. So we are looking at these candlesticks here on the Monday open for Australia. So this was actually about 11 o'clock on Sunday evening for me. That's when the Forex market started. And what I was looking at here, my alert went off because we broke the previous daily high. We broke Friday's high. We got a broke above and a close. We made a new structural high. See how the high from Friday was broken and we got a close above. Very simply, using the Fibonacci tool from the current low body of the day, I dropped that at the high. I placed my long position tool here at the, the top horizontal line of the optimum trade area for entry of the Fibonacci, which is the 62% level. And to show well in, I use a very large 15 pip stop well below the low of the day with a 1.5 R target. Now this is a very simplified version of my strategy. And I did this on a Sunday evening, but I didn't set the trade. Why? Because I usually trade the New York session. This is the Asian session. And although this was a solid idea, um, I doubted it because of the timings and I thought, now let's, let's start the week off using my usual trading times. But if I'd have taken this trade, it would have triggered me imperfectly. And it would have hit my profit target at seven o'clock in the morning. Talk about making money while you sleep. Now that would have been such a lovely way to start Monday morning. And if I'd have done that and nothing else this week, I would have had a far better week than what I have done and saved myself a lot of work and a lot of heartache but that's not what happened. Now we are looking here at the 50 minute time frame, but this beautiful steady increase each day, the uptrend that we've experienced for pound dollar. And what I want to focus on with you guys today is Tuesday's data. Let's have a look more in depth at Tuesday. Tuesday morning, before my boys woke up, I had a look at my charts on my phone. And Tuesday morning, I actually had a trade that was open in both the five percenters and IC markets, my live account. It had carried over from the previous day. So I opened this trade on the Monday afternoon. Um, and that was because on the Monday, we got the break of the previous daily high. We were trending higher and we got this pullback down and I had an order set here. Now, it actually came up quite close to my target, but we didn't hit. And so I carried this over during the Asian session where, as you can see, it just sort of sold off into the London Open. Now, the mistake that I made here is, once again, not trusting my plan. You see, I was looking at the intraday morning for the Tuesday, and I was observing the fact that we had been coming down and just consolidating here. And when we got this 15 minute candlestick close here at 6.15, I started to get a little bit hesitant thinking that I was just overextended from this big push up. I thought that actually if price was going to to move during London the chances are it would come down maybe to this area here and that would be a better place for an entry for a long. But of course that would be very close to my stop. 
So I did all this and in the end I decided to just get out, break even and start the day fresh and that's what I did. So at this point I closed this trade, break even. Now the mistake I then made was I believed so much that this was going to happen. I thought that price would be drawn to this area where we got this fair value gap. It's closer to the institutional price level that I actually went short here with a stop above this little high and I was aiming for the bounce down here. What was that? I closed my position and went in the other direction and the trade I set the short was against the daily uptrend. Talk about amateur trading guys. And pretty much immediately London opened and it went straight up to my stop. But it didn't stop there. It carried on up. And the frustrating thing is that if I had done nothing at all and trusted my plan, it would have gone up to my original profit target and I would have made 1.5 R. See how easy it is to just doubt yourself, to let the emotions take over, to let your mind wander. It's so important to stay disciplined trading. It's just crucial to follow your plan, to be aware of your emotional state, to be aware of any reactive thought patterns that you may be experiencing. If you are trading from a place of fear, if you are trading from emotions, it's so important to just stop. And this week, I have just not even been centered enough, or open enough to recognize that. But it's not the end of the world. The earth still spins. We still have oxygen, we've still got food. It's all good. The account is still green. I'm still doing well. And this is where patience comes in for trading as well. So for me, I've experienced a red week. As you can see, I have not traded well at all, but now is that time where I think it's so important to just cut yourself some slack, to cut the cords to that experience and to move forwards, look ahead. I'm going to take some time out to just center myself, to relax, to get away from the screens, to focus on what's important, to do some fun stuff, to have some joy. I think it's just really important to get that balance between life and trading. And then I'll feel more refreshed to return to the markets next week, um, taking it steady and looking for A quality trades. Once again, I am just so grateful that I have chosen the prop from the five percenters to carry out my trading challenge because I'm still in the program. I've been in it for a while now, but the program does not have a time limit. I can take as much time as I need to pass the challenge. I'm not under any pressure and stress. It's so important when you're trading. If you feel like you're ready to have a go, with a prop firm. If you are consistently making money as a trader, if you want to level up, if you want to have a go at trading a company's capital so that you can make more money, it's definitely a good idea if you are ready. I definitely um, advise you to do it only when you're ready. Uh, but if you're looking for somewhere, I would recommend the five percenters. I've created a separate video if you want some more information and there's a link in the description below. They've got different programs available. I'm currently enrolled in Hyper Growth Program and it's a brilliant experience. They're very supportive and they have a lot of support in the dashboard as well. They offer their own mentorships and education. So do check that out. Meanwhile, I hope you've taken something away from this video. If you have, or if you've got any questions, just let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to give me a like and subscribe if you're not already part of the channel. And I'll catch you in my next video. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for your support. Love you guys very much. Bye bye.